everybody, it's me, Hero Reaper, and here we are with Doom Eternal. Check this out, we are in the Fortress of Doom. Doom Guy has got his own lair, and wow, okay, we're going to have to move up real quick. Now, this is early in the game, and uh, I've been kind of figuring out where to like do my video, so bear with me here. But as you can see here, the demonic infestation of Earth is actually, um, that's pretty bad. I mean, look at that. That is pretty bad. I mean, I don't think there's a place on the planet that hasn't been touched. This is the Fortress of Doom. So, this early in the game, though, uh, as you can tell, you can't really access too much. The, um, the Fortress is pretty sealed up, which is a shame. I would love to go exploring right now and show you guys stuff. But, unfortunately, this playthrough being this early, I can't do that. But look at all the detail. I mean, look at that. Things are moving, and we are in space man we are in space oh this is so much fun there's so much content check this out right here we have the arc resistance network uh recordings this is pretty cool they uh, update from time to time this is an arc broadcast there are reports coming out of the quarantined hellified zone near the san andreas chasm satellite imagery show what arc personnel believe to be the legendary doom slayer himself fighting the mortally challenged. The Doom Slayer, or Doom Guy, as he is sometimes referred to, was thought to be a myth of the Resistance, a sort of avenging angel. He was last reported to be seen on Mars, and is allegedly responsible for the destruction of the Argent Tower there. He disappeared soon afterwards. The UAC continues to deny all reports of his existence. We will continue to broadcast new information so you know you're getting new lore and stuff but check this out you can actually see structures of his cool location in space i mean look at that and look at that there's oh that's the glass i thought there was something else out there that's cool um i've even still seen a whole bunch of stuff look here we have mission select you can actually go back to other levels there's so much stuff to do we have, we literally have like our own Stargate we're going to places. This is so cool. So, let's just, uh, let's just give the game a little update. So, what do I think about it? What do I compare from 2016 to this one? Uh, quite a few things. First of all, the gameplay has not changed too much. So, you're going to luckily have no problem adapting from 2016. That's the good news. Um... The balancing issues, though, have changed things. I will say this, though, since I haven't played uh, Doom 2016 for a little while, and I popped into this game, I wasn't prepared for uh, the speed at which this guy moves and how responsive this game actually is. So I was trying to figure out how to move, and I was missing demons. And uh, I realized this is the same thing that happened to me when I played uh, 2016. Uh, the Switch, not so much when I played that one. Um, but I still had to get used to the way the Switch was, but, you know, that's pretty cool. Uh, no news yet on when the Switch version is coming out of this game. I really want that because I want to be able to take this game on the go, which is what the Switch is going to give me. Um, but in this case, this game, it keeps at 60 FPS, the frames and everything. It's in 4K. The soundtrack, by the way, is beautiful. Uh, I would put the sound bar on so you could hear it, but I don't think you would be able to hear anything else. So, there is that. Um, you do get the shotgun right off the bat. You then get your chainsaw pretty early, thank God. And once again, you kill an enemy with the chainsaw, and they are a piñata. They are a demonic piñata. It is so freaking wonderful to see that. The glory kills have been a little bit overhauled. They are still... Essential. They are also faster too, by the way, in my opinion, while playing this game. And they do actually get faster with the ruin system that's in the game too. Uh, the weapons actually do feel pretty nice and good. Um, there are mods for the weapons that are pretty impressive. You have two primary mods. You will see the little robots floating around with the mods. Um, this time though, they are Vega robots. So you can come up, pull the thing down, the little Vega what I would assume with an eyeball that says Vega on it, will move around, so he doesn't punch him this time, by the way, so if you're expecting that, don't think about it. Um, 
just so much to get used to. And the weapons keep increasing every level. I think in the first level I played, I got like two primary weapons and at least two grenade mods. And by the way, with the grenades, he now looks like a freaking predator, which kind of makes sense because to um, these demons, he is the predator. You know, they're literally, they're looking at him and going, you are one undemonic, ugly motherfucker. And he just roars like a fucking T-Rex and comes at you. I mean, how can you not love that? The lore is back. We have codex pages. There is a lot more uh, story elements that are shoved in your face this time around. I do want to say that. There are more cutscenes. He literally decapitates, decapitates a guy with his bare hands, so that's pretty cool. I mean, look at this. And you can also tell from the flames on coming off the bottom of the gun, I do actually have one of the pre-order bonus uh, skins available too. I and mean, look at the detail here. And wait a minute, is that? That is a demon, by the way, too. That is a really big ass demon that was impaled by a night sentinel mech. And look at that. Like I said, freaking mini predators these guys are. That's how cool this is. So much content. Within the first two major missions, you're going to get quite a few updates. Look at this. We have. I would love to have some of this stained glass actually made from my house. Look at this stuff. It is so awesome. And the fact that you can see through it and it does look like actual stained glass is a nice graphical touch. And the 4K really brings it out. I mean, the environments are beautiful. This is the Night Sentinel world and stuff. So there's a lot going on. One of the things I do have to say about this game versus a lot of the other ones is that it is more uh, platforming involved. So, um, you know, that, 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 that is a big deal here. Um, and as people recall, there were a few people uh, who were like games journalists who were playing and they couldn't, they couldn't platform to save their life in a first person shooter. And I gotta admit, it's not my big thing. And look, there's a glowing wolf over there, green. You just barely make him out. He's showing you the way. But uh, I didn't have that problem. I've actually been more persistent after taking down demons to study the environment and see what I need to do. Now, it's led to some deaths, I'll admit that, but you know what? It's been fun. And there's been a couple of times I've, uh, I've actually uh, more than willingly killed myself just to see what's going on. That's how important it's all been. And as you can see here, I've been pretty good with it, but again, you have to sort of still know what, what you're doing. That's pretty cool. And again, the environment and stuff. Oh, man. We have some of the possessed. And there are actually levels on them. Can they get more dank? That's cool. I don't care what anybody says. That's cool. And I've seen people already, uh, you know, doing videos on this stuff. It's pretty awesome. I mean, how can you not enjoy this game? It's just beyond me. And check this out. We have the minimap that makes a return. The minimap is actually, in my opinion, even more incredible. Oh, come on, man. I missed one. I gotta go back. I've gotten to the point now where I'm actually starting to check the minimap too for a lot of stuff. Because it's just that kind of a And we have found a secret, which is an extra life. Now the question is, do you want extra life or do you want extra power? I'm gonna go for uh, a couple of times extra power, and other times most assuredly. That happens too, by the way. Sometimes, no matter what you're doing, you're going to die. <laughs> or, at least with the falls, in this one it's not an automatic game over. I do hate that, though. You do lose health and uh, bars and stuff. Now, in my case, I'm trying to time these jumps just right. And I'm, like I said, the platforming is not my major thing in a first-person shooter. I do want to make that a bit fundamentally clear. So I, I do live with it, but for the most part it's pretty good. It's just it's just something I put up with. 
it's not my favorite thing, but there's a lot of stuff to find. Look at that. Good eggs page. So there's a lot you can do here. Gameplay wise, it's really good. It's really well done. This whole environment of the Night Sentinels is just, I mean, God, look at this. It's so perfect. We're getting so much uh, lore, information, gameplay mechanics. I'm shocked and look at how much content there is here. Now we got flying demons. This is so cool. DMs make their return. By the way, that's pretty cool. The heavy cannon is one of my favorite weapons in this game. I mean, I know everybody's like, go to the shotgun, but... so much stuff to do here it's kind of funny. Oh hell! Oh, I forgot there was one of these dudes here! freaking hard to kill but they are so awesome i do like now that they have little beady eyes um there's just so much content to work with here the other thing i love is that there is an actual damage system to all the demons you can actually see them being hurt you know they have got to be in pain there's a reason they're afraid of the the doom guy i mean he's so freaking awesome so you got badass weaponry you got badass equipment You've got great upgrades, the, gra the graphics, the gameplay, everything works very well. The only real complaint I have is a certain type of environmental traversal. And that's because even though they, they have a little thing that points to go here, it doesn't always point to what your next main objective is. That's about the only real complaint I've actually had, but I will say this, sometimes uh, I don't even bother to look at that because I'm actually trying to study the environment. And I've actually found a few things, but because you have to have like a super precision, absolute 100% lock on, it's harder than it sounds. I'm being fair there too. It is way harder than it sounds to pull off. Oh my God, this is so much harder to pull off. But it is worth it when you pull them off. I've done quite a few of them, and some of them are required to, no matter what, progress through the environment, which is harder than hell, but oh, is it so worth it. And even if there's a secret, I don't care. I want to get through. That is my objective. It is like Dark Souls in that regard, or Bloodborne. You are determined. I had to actually stop one night because I was just so tired. I couldn't focus, and I needed to rest. Although, to be fair, I was dreaming about the damn chunk for several hours and I even woke up and I'm like oh god we can stop oh, but it was so worth it what I got it done and that's the thing you're challenging yourself the people who are complaining that oh this is too hard it's like dude grow a spine and just kill the demons figure out the platforming and if you have to go check out somebody who's already done it on YouTube I mean that kind of stuff right there will save your butt and you'll continue to enjoy the game I have to say it, it is worth the $60 investment. In my case, this was a little more because I bought the Deluxe Edition, but that came with a lot of content, including that cool-ass skin I've got. Um, there's just so much. 
I do want to stress, though, that this is related to the original Dune games that came out, um, including even down to the bunny. There are pictures of him holding his pet bunny, you know, and, and he even has a cage and, and bunny food and stuff, and like bunny, you know, uh, the little saw stuff they put in. And, you know, he's got a record player, an old-fashioned computer and stuff, uh, a nice gaming setup, like three screens. So this guy is set. The Doom guy is, he's cool. I mean, he even has nunchucks in his room. I wish I could show you, but I don't have access to that point right now on any of the files because I'm so busy in actual gameplays. I'm, I'm just playing. I mean, killing demons, having fun. The Codex is here, of course. Um, my God, there's so much I want to do. So many levels I want to play and just beat the living crap out of. And, oh, God, the boss fights are, wow. Even when you're told the weak spots, you should be prepared that they are still not going to be easy to take down. And, you know, some of these bosses, they become regular enemies later on in the game, and you're like, oh, damn it. <laughs> but... Eventually, your guy becomes so strong, hopefully, uh, that you can do this. Now, in my case, I was a little dumb because I didn't upgrade the character right away. So I was being almost masochistic to myself and making it harder. But that is actually a fun part of this game, is seeing what you can do. Sometimes even letting yourself be super hard before I'm like, okay, screw it. I'm going to go back and see what I got. And you know what? It's good. Now, I have noticed that... Um, even when my internet is strong, there's times Bethesda Net does go down. The good news is the game does operate without it, but you will get rewards and stuff online. There's also the battle mode, which is their multiplayer. The only thing I'm going to complain about here is there's no snap map. Now, I'm hoping that comes back in an update. There is free stuff coming for all players. There is some planned... DLC and I am actually going to get that for free because I did get that deluxe edition and there's other people who got the nice collector's edition I wish I could have gotten that but uh, It wasn't available it would have been cool to have the doom helmet when I do this for do this sort of walkthrough sort of mini review thing But I don't uh, Angry Joe did by the way. He got his video out um, I'm just doing this real quick not only to get this video out But also to tell you if you can do this if you have the money on your PlayStation your Xbox, your PC, I don't know about Stadia, I wouldn't recommend it from what I hear, but definitely any of those systems, pick it up. And when the Switch version comes out, I will get it, I will play it, I'll show you what it looks like, and I'll tell you if it's worth it. Because I know that Doom on my Switch is worth it. I mean, sometimes that's all I play on my Switch. So, there's that. Also, I do want to say this, guys. Stay inside. Be safe. Don't let the CV-19 get you. You, you. you guys know what I'm talking about, that virus and the pandemic we're in. And just be careful out there. Um, just be careful. That's all I can say, guys. Just be careful. Because there's a lot of stuff going on. And that's all I'm going to say. All right. Uh, like and subscribe. Have fun. Play Doom Eternal. Plus play the original Doom. And remember, if you're one of the lucky people like me, who got this pre-ordered and stuff, you also got Doom 64 for free. And I have a lot of Doom. In fact, I'll probably do a video just on all the Doom I actually do have in my collection. It's pretty, it'd be probably a pretty good video. Anyways, guys, like and subscribe, have fun, and remember, rip and tear until it is done.